So in this video, we're checking out the new Martin Jerry dimmer with its unique rocker and rocker design. You can program rules for long press on and long press up and long press down on the dimming. The LeeSim dimmer has a unique segmented numerical display with up and down brightness buttons and a capacitive button in the middle that to toggle the light. We'll be circling back and checking out the Wardham dimmer, see how things tie up in this State of the Dimmer video with Tasmodo and Home Assistant. So I'll just jump right to it, because I know everybody's probably wondering, which one should we get? There's three of them. Which one's your favorite? Well, the Martin Jerry one has happened to be my favorite, and happened to be my family's favorite as well. It's got the power button rocker at the bottom, which also you can do the long press actions for other rules and automations that you can't do with the other switches. Great feature I like is you can assign rules to this middle rocker for the up and down actions. So if you long press down, we have it jump to like a 30% option. And if you long press up, we currently have it set to 100%, but you could change that to like 75% if you'd like. So it's a great looking switch. And also one thing I did have issues with, I had a Z-Wave dimmer, and I'm not gonna mention the manufacturer because we don't need to. Sometimes it would surge the bulbs. And the bulbs I found, they were kind of picky. And I tried a, the other dimmer, actually that Leesim dimmer, which I'll get to later in the video, it would actually cause it to have a little bit of flicker at low brightnesses. But I haven't had that issue at all with the Martin Jerry dimmer, which was actually impressive because due to the price, it was even cheaper. And right now it's $24 for this Martin Jerry on Amazon. Some of the lightning sales we've been finding, you can get these for $18 a piece, which is great. It's definitely a steal for a dimmer. Some of the bulbs that I have in my kitchen over my table are these Edison style 5000K color bulbs. And they do say dimmable. It's not the exact brand I have. I bought them several years ago, but they are kind of picky. And, but I haven't had any issues with them with the Martin Jerry. One side note, Martin Jerry, if you're watching this, I did look at your Martin Jerry smart plug, this octagon shape one. And it actually is like your typical smart plug. It's glued around the edge. But if you pry it apart, and there is a Tuya module inside, but you'd have to destroy the case to actually flash it, and that's not what we want. If they would put some sort of screw where we can easily take this thing apart and put it back together without destroying it, if they left it with a soldering points where not where you had to destroy the case, it'd be an excellent plug, and it doesn't block any of the other sockets I've found typically, And but it's... I can't really easily put Tasmodo on. I could do it, but I'm going to end up destroying the plug, which it's not really worth it for the $14. I actually just end up spending a few dollars more and get a Sonoff S31 that has those two little slide outs and those screws. And it also has power monitoring as well and definitely does not block any plugs. So can't give you a recommendation to Martin Jerry Smart Plug, but I can tell you absolutely the Martin Jerry Dimmer if you don't need dimming I do highly recommend there is more a little soldering to it because of the Tuya module so it's not like those KU LED light switches but I really like this light switch because again it's just like on their Martin Jerry dimmer you control everything there's no hardwired uh, LEDs to in the microcontrollers locked away like in the other dimmers this one you can actually control both colors of the LED at the bottom uh, with rules and Tasmodo and whatnot. It's a beautiful looking switch, I think. It almost it's it looks glass, but it's not glass. It's just a highly polished plastic. It's kind of got a clear bluish look to it. If you look back in my the very intro of this video, you can see it next to the Oidum dimmer that I have in my recreation room. So it's a great little switch. I recommend it as well. But we really love the dimmer. Uh, and you can probably get me some more of these dimmers. So well, let's go on to the next dimmer. So the second dimmer is the LeeSim dimmer. It's also based on the same Tuya module. It has a button to lower the brightness and a button to raise the brightness. It has a touch capacitive screen that you just tap on the black area and it toggles the light on and off. This segmented display will show a zero whenever the light is off. And then when the light's on, it shows the brightness from one through H, which is your one through nine and then H for like 10. It's a pretty neat dimmer. I have it in my kitchen, doing my kitchen lights, and we don't have any issues with it. And we're able to flash Tasmodo on it and pick the same Tuya module. You may have to change the Tuya dimmer device ID from 3 to 2, 
Oidum one uses a three and this one it uses a two. It just depends on which if your dimming doesn't work, then just try to change the dimming module number. Just on the console, do a set option 34 space with the number 2, and it'll change it over. So dimmer does fit in a standard Decora plate. You can see it's squared off. You don't have to modify any face plates. And that's the same thing as the Martin Jerry dimmer. You don't have to modify any face plates. It'll fit with the Decora switches. So, of course, there's the Oidum dimmer, which is also the same variant, which is this Elo Lopo dimmer. You do have to modify the faceplate if you're going to put it in a multi-gang box. But if you have a Dremel, it doesn't take but a few minutes to do that. One advantage this one does have, it has that capacitive touch where you just slide your finger up and down and you can quickly change the brightness. You don't have to hold down the button to get the exact brightness you want. You just tap on, if you want low, you tap it here. And then if you want middle or high, etc. and tap it. Of course, if you're on and off, if you push it in, it'll toggle it on and off. All in all, they're all great three dimmers. You just kind of have to pick the one that looks best for you and what's going to fit your needs. So let's take a look at how they dim. First up, we have the Martin Jerry dimmer. I tried to adjust the camera to not do automatic brightness adjustment based on the lighting in the room so you could see the brightness going up and down as I cycled through various things. I tried to adjust the shutter settings so it wouldn't mess with the LED lights too much, but you may see some type of rolling. One thing to note with the Martin Jerry one is you can adjust the fade rates and how fast it fades in and how fast it fades out because everything is controlled in Tasmodo. Next up is the Lee Sim dimmer. As you can see, it has a very smooth dimming and a very smooth out and a quick to come on and quick to go off. That's all going to be hard coded and you cannot change that because that's inside the actual secondary microcontroller unit inside the dimmer itself. So currently, as of this video, if you buy the Martin Jerry dimmer, there is another Wikipedia page on the Tasmodo side that has a great explanation of various pieces and parts. They have a little different way to solder it. I haven't used that method. I had one user tell me he followed that and he had an issue with not being able to power up the ESP module. But once he was able to redo his solder joints, he was able to, to flash the unit and use it properly. It just pops open in the two year modules on the back side of the faceplate. It's really out in the open, easy to solder. If you just follow this section here, which I can leave a link to, this is not exactly the board, but it's got the same exact two year module. And you have your TX, RX. You don't have to solder GPIO zero because the up button is also GPIO zero, solder the ground and 3.3 volts. So you only need to solder four little wires and it's very simple to do. If you've looked in some of the soldering techniques I've shown, like say in my smart laundry, that where you tin the wires and then put a little bit of tinning on the pads and you just heat them and pull them together. And it's really simple to do. Currently, as of this video, I have a temporary fork of Tasmodo with a couple changes. It's forked as of 63016, and you can find the source code and the changes I did to the code. So if you wanted to compile it yourself or you just want to take a look at the changes, they're not written as in the drivers like I'm going probably will do. It, it does work. It works great. We actually have this in my kitchen, so we use it every day, and definitely I could not use it if, in the kitchen if it didn't work out right. I would It wouldn't last but an hour, maybe if that. We had to do a lot of changes in the template itself. So there's different scenarios I came up with where the state wasn't always publishing or the, and or the dimming status wasn't publishing based on how the unit was turned on or turned off. And also I had that issue with other dimmers as well. What I'd recommend at the time of this video is to use this fork, the changes I did in here where you can use a simplified template and there is the Martin Jerry template to pick because there's those status lights that actually Tasmodo has to control but currently, once you do flash it, you will need to apply, which I state in here, if you follow the instructions, there is a backlog right here because you will need to do the rules for the up and the down. And then you also have the long press up and down. And don't forget, you have the long press on and off that you can use if you like. I currently use that to turn on a light over my kitchen sink where I never had a three-way before, which is nice to being able to turn that off and on from the table light. So if you, the instructions are really simple for the Martin Jerry, you just follow through. I do have a bin file pre-built for you guys. It's right here in the bins folder. But again, if you want to just download the source code and compile it yourself, 
be my guest. It's there. Rock and roll with it. So that's the Martin Jerry dimmer. And as I say, I do recommend using this code for also the Lee Sim dimmer, which we're going to go over, and the Oidum dimmer, which is your typical Tuya dimmer modules. And there's a simple configuration YAML you can paste. It's, it's simplified with those changes. You can paste that straight into your lights config and your lights section and just make sure, you know, of course, make sure and change your topic. I have this one listed as to your test and just change each one. So in this last segment, we'll show you some quick little videos and pictures of the teardowns on the MJ dimmer and the Lisim dimmer. And while we're showing all those videos and clips, I wanted to thank everybody for all the support and all the comments. It's been great going down this journey of showing you all the various things I've learned and be able to give back to the community. You can find all the links to all these dimmers in the description of the video. It does help support the channel a little bit so we can buy additional equipment. Been doing a few live streams here and there, looking to upgrade some of that stuff. So I do appreciate all the support. There's several different ways to support us. You can find the description of the video. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. There's no obligation to do it. Appreciate you watching all the videos and the comments. Be sure and hit the bell icon so you can catch our next video because we're going to be doing various live streams and coming out with different content that you possibly might enjoy. Thanks and y'all take care.